What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm gonna to be showing you how I route my drums from Machine into Studio One. So I've had quite a few people ask me about this, but if I'm being honest, I've been putting off this video for a really long time because personally, I don't use the latest version of the machine hardware. I still have the MK1 from like 2012. And on top of that, I also don't use the latest version of their software. I'm still on version one. So I wasn't quite sure how valuable this video might be for you guys. Now, even though I don't own their latest version of their hardware, I do own the latest version of their software. I don't use it, but I do own it. And after looking at it a little bit further, the process to create my drum workflow is the same regardless of whatever hardware piece you have, so it might be worth taking a look at. Now, if you're new here or if you just need a refresher, basically the way that I like to work is I like to route all of my pads from machine into Studio One, and there I set them up as individual tracks and channels and then record everything inside of the software. Now, I know a lot of people who like to work inside of machine and then just port over, import over those sequence drums and finish it there, but personally, I'm more of a visual person, so having it all in one place just helps with the way that I like to work. Now, before we begin, I do want to point out that this is not the only way to use your machine. There are so many ways to do it, and it is because of this versatility that the machine is my favorite way to program drums. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how I set up my drum workflow using software version one and two, and then explain to you why personally I still choose to use version one. So without further ado, Let's jump right in. But all right, jumping in the Studio One, I'm actually going to start off with software version two because I'm assuming if you purchased a machine recently or within the past couple of years, this is probably what you're using. But all right, once you have the VST actually on your timeline, what you wanna do is you wanna click on this piano button here and that'll actually open up the VST. Now, to save some time, I've already loaded this up with some samples, but obviously you would go in here and fill it up with either your favorite drum kit or your favorite one shots. But if you take a look here, I have a kick, a snare and a hi-hat. Now the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna create a channel on your mixer for every pad, every sound that you plan on using. And to do that, you're gonna wanna go up here to this arrow, click on it, and by default, you should already have one checked. And what you wanna do here is you wanna check a box for every pad you plan on using. So because I only have three sounds and one is already checked, I'm gonna check two and three. Now, if you take a look at the mixer, you'll see that I have two more faders available. If I go and uncheck them, they go away. So obviously you wanna have them checked to have them visible. Now, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna focus on this middle section here. By default, you're going to be on this plug tab, but go ahead and click on the rotary knob right on top and you should get these parameters here. Make sure you're on output, sound, and audio. Now, from here, what you wanna do is go ahead and click on your first sound and we're gonna drop down this menu that says group and send it to extension one, AKA channel one. So you wanna do that for all of your sounds. Send this to channel two, and third sound, send it to channel three. Now, if you take a look here at the mixer, now every sound should be routed accordingly. So if I click on the kick, you get signal here. If I click on the snare, I get signal here. Same thing for the hi-hat. Now, the next step is you're gonna to wanna to go over and click on the MIDI tab. Go back up to your first sound. Make sure the destination is host and channel is one. Go down to your second. Make sure the destination is host, channel two. Same thing for the last one. Destination is host and channel three. Last but not least, go over to the input tab, then over to the MIDI section and click on your first sound. From here, change the source from default to host the channel to one, and then turn off the through because otherwise you'd get like this really nasty feedback loop. Now from here, go ahead and repeat the process for all of the other sounds. So snare, source, host, channel two, through off, source, host, channel three, through off. Now from here, you can actually click out of the machine software, but once you're back in studio one, go over to the top here and go over to where it says track, add tracks. Basically what we're doing here is we're creating a track for every pad we plan on using. That way we're able to record and sequence inside of Studio One. Now for the name, you can just leave it as it is for now because we'll change it later. Under type, select instrument. Under count, you're gonna wanna select or create a track for every pad you plan on using. So because I have only three sounds and I already have one track out here, which is channel one, 
I'm gonna just create two more. For the input, I'm gonna go ahead and select our VST, Machine 2. Now, because I already have one track out here and it's already routed to channel one, I'm gonna start this or these new tracks from channel two. Under output, make sure existing instrument is selected. And for this drop down menu, again, select your VST, Machine 2, and start from channel two. Make sure that ascending is checked for both and hit OK. Now, once you have your tracks out here, go ahead and rename them. So I'm gonna click and make this kick, make this snare, and make this closed hat. You can actually go down here as well on your mixer and change those to match. Now, the very last step is to go ahead and just expand these tracks, bring them down like this, and make sure that they are all routed to their individual channels. So if you, could, if you take a look, the two and three are already on machine channel three, machine channel two. The first one, just make sure that the bottom drop down menu is also on machine and then channel one. So essentially this is what your setup should look like now. Now from here, you can simply just go ahead and start recording. Press record on studio one, tap the pads to whatever pattern you wanna create and everything should be laid out individually. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and go back over to studio one. To record two at a time, just make sure the record enable button is set. I'm gonna go ahead and I like a pre-count. I'm gonna turn my metronome on and let's go ahead and just record something to show you guys. And as you can see, it recorded all the MIDI for my snare in its own track. Same thing for my kick. And if I go ahead and play that back, we should see signal on only these two faders. But that in essence is how you do my workflow in version two. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to a new window and show you how to do this exact same setup in version one. And like I said, explain to you guys why personally I still use the older version. Okay, now we're looking at version one of the software and I've actually gone ahead and I loaded up the same drum one shots just to keep everything even. Now the process for this is pretty much the same with some slight variations. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, from here what you wanna do, same thing is hit over to this arrow and select or create channels for each pad. Now from here, we're gonna do what we did last time, go over to our first sound, go over to out, and make sure that it's changed from group one to out one. Second one, make sure it's sent to out two, and same thing, sent to out three. And now we should have everything routed to its individual channels. So ch look at the mixer here. All right, we're good to go. Okay, now this part of the step is where it gets a little bit different. And basically, this feature that I'm about to show you guys is personally why I still like to use version one of the software as opposed to two. But what you wanna do here to create, I guess, the workflow that I like to, to operate in is go over to where it says group A, drop down this menu, go over to where it says sound MIDI batch setup, click on it, and change it from restore default to sounds to MIDI notes and hit apply. Next, you're going to want to go to each of your sounds. So let's start with the kick, the first pad, right click on it, and then click on sound MIDI settings and make sure this is on channel one, low note C3, high note C3, hit OK. Go over to the second pad, which is my snare, right click on it, sound MIDI settings. Make sure this is on channel two and that the low note is on C sharp three and same thing for high note. It should already be there by default, but that's where it should be. And then last but not least on the close hat, right click, sound MIDI settings, make sure it's on channel three and notice how now the low note and the high note is on D3, hit okay. From here, we can go ahead and just exit out of the software and we're gonna create those tracks like we did last time. So track, add tracks and make sure instrument two, yes. Uh, input, we're gonna change this to machine, start from channel two. Output, machine, start from channel two, make sure ascending is clicked, hit okay. Let's go ahead and expand these. Make sure this is checked for machine. So we got channel one, channel one, channel two and two and three and three. Let's go ahead and change the names real quick. Okay, everything seems to be set up. So let's go ahead and record something to make sure it's all working. Let's go ahead and play back real quick.
But all right, now we have everything set up version one and two to do what we want to do. So now the question now becomes, well, why do you prefer to use version one as opposed to two? Now the answer to that is pretty much because version two doesn't have the sound MIDI batch setup function which is what I prefer to work in. Now, basically what this feature does is it stops my sounds from being spread across my keyboard and programs them or limits and restricts them to only one key on the piano roll. Now, you might be wondering, well, why the heck would you want to do that, especially if you're making hip hop or trap? Wouldn't you want to have the ability to pitch your, your sounds up and down all in the same screen? And the answer is yes, and I have another way to do that. But the way that I like to work is I like to see everything in one screen without having the MIDI notes overlapping. So to demonstrate what I'm talking but I'm going to go back to version two of the machine software and I'm going to double click on this kick region. And as you can see, these are all my kicks and they are binded to C3. Reason being is because we have the ability to pitch here. So everything that you program in version two of the software will be binded to C3. And if I go ahead and just click this up, pitch up, pitch down, no problem. Go over to the snare. Same thing. It's binded to C3. Pitch up pitch down, but if I want to see both of these at the same time, select them both, you'll see that they all appear on C3. So unless you color code them, I wouldn't be able to tell what is the snare or what is the kick. Now, if you go back over to version one of the software, uh, as a comparison, this is my kick, but it's only binded to C3. If I move it up, nothing happens. Move it down, nothing happens. Same thing with my snare. It's binded to C sharp three, move it up. Nothing happens, move it down, nothing happens. And then now, if I wanna see both at the same time, I highlight both and look at that. The snare is slightly above the kick because it is set uh, half a step higher. Now, in the case that I do want to pitch something while using version one, all I really do is go down here to my sample one, which is the native sampler within Studio One, drop my hi-hat or snare in there, and here it's able to spread it across the keyboard. So I'm able to have it the best of both worlds. Now I know to some of you guys, this might sound a little bit silly, but at the end of the day, it's about finding the workflow that best works and serves you because I don't want to be bogged down with technology. I don't really care about using the latest and greatest. What I care about is my efficiency, time and efficiency. How long do I take to make a beat? Because what I found out personally is the longer I take to make something, the, the deeper in the rabbit hole you go and the more frustrated you get. I wanna be able to have an idea and execute it as fast as I can and this does it for me. And at the end of the day, it's also about knowing how you work as a person. I'm visual. I need to see everything in one place. So this is what works for me. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Now, regardless of whether if you're on MK3 or the original like I am, if you want to work with your drums the way that I like to work with mine, hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. But as always, I will see you guys on the next one.